Hello readers and viewers, welcome to another AC Labs video review. I'm Aaron Schatz, Editor-in-Chief of AC Publishing. Today we'll be looking at the Synology DS211 with Disk Station Management Software version 3.0. This is review ID 14737. You can check out this and all our other reviews by going to www.aslabs.com. While you're there, subscribe to our RSS feeds and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube video feed. You can leave us comments and we'd love to hear from you, so please just Leave us comments, post on the forum, send me an email, you know, whatever you want. We're here. We'd like to hear from you. So let's get down a little bit more into the unit. Now, the previous review I did was the DS210J, and this is, looks very similar, doesn't it? Let me just show you what happens when I turn it off. It's on right now, as you can see from the little blue light right here. And as you can see that it's turning off, and it's going to blink until it does. And once it's off, then I'm going to show you some more. So we'll wait till it's off. So now that you've seen that the unit shuts off properly, and it's a, a guided shut off, even though you hold the power button down, it doesn't shut off like a normal computer would. So, you know, even though you're worried about like, oh, I'm going to crash the hard drives, no, it shuts down normally. So holding it down, let it start blinking and doing its thing, and you basically got the computer shut off normally. So let's see how the hard drives get installed. There are two screws on the back right here. There's one here and here. So let's open those things up. This basically is the same process as the ds 2 j Yeah, I like, I like ratcheting screwdrivers. <laughs> but basically it's the same process as the ds 2 j So you would have to take out these two screws and basically open up the unit and then install the hard drives. There is an open-close thing here, so we're just going to slide that open. And you can see right there, it comes out, and I've got two Seagate one terabyte drives in there, provided by Synology. So as you can see, there's ample room for airflow. Basically, this is the same exact layout as the DS210J. So if you check out the review of the DS210J that I've done, you'll basically see the same amount of stuff. What really is different is that this has double the speed and double the RAM. This has 256 megs of RAM and it's got a 1.6 gigahertz ARM processor in it. So it's basically double the performance of the DS210J. And basically it's an all around better unit, but you do pay a little bit more, but it's worth it if you need the speed. So that's how the drives are installed. You still get the 70 millimeter fan right here, and everything else is pretty much the same. So let me just close it up and go a little bit about the front again. So now that the hard drives are in there, let's take a look at the exterior of the unit. In the front, you have four status LEDs up here. You have one for the status of the overall unit, the LAN activity, and two LEDs for each disk. You have the reset button and the power button, and remember that the LED glows a subdued blue. It's a nice blue. It's not like one of those really ultra-powerful, blind-your-eyes blue, so it's nice. You can see the bottom has four rubber feet to prevent it from sliding around, and that's good. The back of the unit has two USB 2.0 ports, the gigabit Ethernet port, the AC adapter port and a laptop style lock so you can lock this down you know in case it's out and around you don't want it to get stolen. The front I forgot to mention has an additional USB port and the USB ports are very handy for adding storage and you can even add printers to this and make this a print server. So that's pretty much the exteriors of the unit. So now that we've seen the externals and the internals of the unit, let's take a look at how the unit works and to do that we're going to need to reset and I'm going to have to do some screen grabs. So we'll see the Disk Station Manager 3.0 software on the DS211. If you do have a DS210J, you can still upgrade yours to the new Disk Station Management software, and that's really handy. In fact, Synology supports their units from like three years ago, so even if you have a really old unit, you can probably upgrade to Disk Station Management software. And I haven't seen a company that supports their really old products for like a long time, and that's really nice. So even if you buy a product, you get support for way out in the future, and that's great. But for now, let's reset. I'm going to show you the Disk Station Management Software version 3.0. All right, so now we're situated at the DS211 login screen. You could see that mine is named ASE DS211. So I'll put the username of admin and our password in, and it'll take us to the desktop, as it were. And you could see that there are some icons here on the desktop, as well as the menu up top to the left here, GNOME style. 
the, big, the first thing I'm going to show you is the control panel and I'm going to open another window to show you that this this operating system is multi-windowed so DSM 3.0 unlike the older 2.3 can have multiple things running at the same time but running is really not the right word it's basically just showing you more information at once so it's a little more intuitive as well so let's start out with the storage here as you can see I've got one volume created it's basically a terabyte and if you go into the hard drive management tab you could see that the two hard drives are running well under 40 degrees centi and you could check out the smart information on each of them so each of them check out and it's nice that they do smart monitoring as well you can actually set up email alerts for anything that happens and what have you but that's pretty much beyond this review but it does work so you could see that uh, I got a terabyte array set up it's RAID 1 so it's safe and uh, let's go over here to the control panel as you can see you can move the windows around too let me just open the resource monitor so if you have so if you're on the DSM 3.0 software you can open this up and leave this somewhere else so you can monitor the resources as you're doing stuff <clears throat> excuse me so the first thing we want to do is we want to make a shared folder but before that we want to have a user and a group to put for that shared folder so let's make a group first so you click groups and you can see that there's a users group already in there that's the default group so we're gonna make a new group and we'll call it um, people that's a good group right okay that's pretty much all we need we don't need to set up the privileges yet we'll do that later alright so now we have a new group named people so we'll go back and we'll add a user into that group so you can see that there's already two users in there by default the admin user which is the system default user and it's like the root user of the the DS211 and the guest account so we're gonna create a new user and we're gonna call him Aaron and the description is rules <laughs> that's just you know whatever next um, actually go back how about a password so put in a password a test and okay and we want to add them to the people group next now here's where you can assign the person's privileges but we don't want to do it that way if you do want to do it that way you can just you know click yeah he's got read write access to the public share and everything else not really who cares but if you don't want to do it that way you want to assign stuff for a group we'll do that in a little bit now here's another good thing you can enable a quota per user so let's say I want Aaron to only have access to four gigs of space if you set the quota to four gigs means that Aaron can upload four gigs of stuff before the server basically says no I'm not I'm not taking any more stuff from you and then it'll just basically lock him out from doing it until he gets rid of some stuff so that's pretty useful if you have people that want to dump stuff on the NAS that are just like they don't care how much space they take up and it's all garbage files anyway so if you want quotas this has quotas it's very useful for some people now since I made a new user I can assign privileges to that for the actual applications on the DS211 for instance I can have Aaron get access to file station audio station download station surveillance station but I don't want to do any of that because the admins really has all that stuff so I'll click apply boom now he's got privileges on the pub chair that I have but now let's make a new share we have our user, we have our group, now let's make a new share. So we go into share and you see some shared folders already. So if you have audio station, the photo station already done, most of these are going to be already on yours. So they're done by default when you enable those applications. This is the share that I made just in general for testing. But let's make a new share and we'll call it my share. Now when you're on this page you can actually see you can hide the share in my network places so if you're browsing it'll actually be hidden from view but you know most people will know that they can find the share anyway without doing that so this is really meaningless you can encrypt the share if you want but most people probably won't do that if you were on a domain you'd be able to actually have Windows ACLs so you know if you're on a domain you can actually choose to enable that but we're not on a domain so if you are on a domain please send me an email or give me a comment on how that works I'd be interested to hear how it works alright so it took me to the privileges after creating the share and it's asking me to assign a user or group so we're not going to do it by user we're going to do it by the group so you click the drop down box and you go to groups 
Now, we want the people group to have rewrite access, and the users group, we don't want any access. Great. So let's see what happens. Let's, let's go to advanced privileges. Some stuff in here that you can read, but nothing that you have to be concerned about. All right, so that's okay. All right. So basically what happened was, I believe Aaron was in the users and the people group. Let's just verify that. If I can remember where that would be. Oh yes, that's in user. Check Aaron. In groups. Yes, he's in the he's in the users group. So we probably should not have taken out no access, or we could just remove him from the users group. We can't. <laughs> All right, so that takes care of that. So everybody has to get added into the default users group, which makes sense. So pretty much if I denied access to that share, it won't work. So let's take that, go back out of there. We'll go into that my share, we'll go into privileges, and it should have removed something. Let's see if it did. No, okay, we're going to take out no access. We're just going to leave it blank. So basically, Aaron's going to be able to see that my share now because he's in the people group. And we didn't deny it to all the users. So that's basically that. So if I go into this, you should be able to see the my share. And there we go. Now let's put in Aaron and the password test. All right, now let's just show you that you can create something. Create text file, test, boom. And okay, so now we have access to the share, and that's great. Now we go one up. I shouldn't have access to anything else. All right, I don't, which is normal. Okay, so that's that. That's how you make a share on this software, which is pretty good. It's pretty intuitive. It pretty much is the same as the old one, just in a nice, more windowy manner. So let's go back to the control panel. Let's show you the other installation stuff of this system. Yeah, of the system. You can share your folders by Samba, which is basically um, the Windows file sharing protocol, or you can do Mac file sharing, Apple File Talk, or NFS. Now, if you're on a domain, this is where you set up your domain controller. If you're on a work group, you just put in the work group name. And like I said, if you're on a domain, send me an email or give me a comment. I'd like to hear how this thing works for ACLs and such. I can't test that. I don't have any Windows domain. And incidentally, if you have a domain, here's where you would go to get all your domain privileges. But since this isn't on a domain, it's not going to work. So that's that. Now, we can go into the application privileges to assign the applications to the groups that I've done or to a user. So I'm not going to do that right now because I already did that before. Alright, so we want to make this an internal web server again, so we go into the web services and we enable the web station. Now if you want to create a virtual host, you click the virtual host tab. And a virtual host basically means like, you can actually say, I want, I want this to be a host for localweb.test, for instance. So you wouldn't use a .com if you weren't on the internet or you know anything that's that's routable on the internet but you can use any local things like local.test local. whatever you want that's not a routable internet name so that's you could do that and you click okay now your DNS 